according to the testimony of each defendant these men saw no evil spoke none and none was uttered in their presence if we combine only the stories from the front bench this is the ridiculous composite picture of hitler's government that emerges it was composed of a number two man who never suspected the jewish extermination program although he signed over a score of anti-Semitic decrees. A number three man who was merely an innocent middleman transmitting Hitler's orders without even reading them, like a postman or delivery boy. A foreign minister who knew little of foreign affairs and nothing of foreign policy. A field marshal who issued orders to the armed forces but had no idea of the results they would have in practice. A security chief who was of the impression that the policing functions of his Gestapo and SD were somewhat on the lines of directing traffic. A party philosopher who had no idea of the violence which his philosophy was inciting in the 20th century. A governor general of Poland who reigned but did not rule. A Gauleiter of Franconia, whose occupation was to pour forth filthy writings about the Jews, but who had no idea that anybody would read them. A minister of the interior, who knew not even what went on in his own office, much less the interior of his own department, and nothing at all about the interior of Germany. A Reichsbank president who was totally ignorant of what went in and out of the vaults of his bank. To say of these men that they are not guilty, it would be as true to say there has been no war, there are no slain, there has been no crime. In the name of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, Sir Hartley Shawcross delivers his summation. This trial must form a milestone in the history of civilization, not only marking that right shall in the end triumph over evil, but also that ordinary people of the world, and I make no distinction here between friend and foe, are now determined that the individual must transcend the state. The state and law are made for man, that through them he may achieve a fuller life, a higher purpose, and a greater dignity. In the name of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, General Rudenko delivers his summation. And when we ask, have the charges against the defendants been proved before the court? Have the defendants been convicted of their guilt? There is only one answer. Their crimes have been proved. Neither the statements of the defendants nor the arguments of the defense were able to refute our grave accusations. It has been impossible to cast doubt on events which actually took place. The truth cannot be challenged. That is the real meaning of this trial. That is the lasting result of our long and strenuous effort. In the name of the French Republic, Monsieur de Ribes delivers his summation. When this international trial is closed and the principal war criminals sentenced, we shall go back to our own countries. The fate of these men now lies entirely with your conscience. This is beyond our competence. Our task is finished. Now it is for you, in the silence of your deliberations, to listen to innocent blood crying for justice. Lord Justice Lawrence, Great Britain. Mr. Francis Biddle, United States. Monsieur de Faber, France. And Major General Nikichenko, USSR, and their alternates prepare the verdict. It will be based on the opinion of the majority. First, 
1946, the verdict is delivered by Lord Justice Lawrence, President of the Tribunal. Of the organizations, the SS, SD, Gestapo, and Leadership Corps are found guilty. The High Command, SA, and Reich Cabinet, not guilty. As for the individual, Wilhelm Hermann Goering, guilty of conspiracy, crimes against peace, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. Death by hanging. Rudolf Hess, guilty of conspiracy and crimes against peace. Life imprisonment. Joachim von Ribbentrop, guilty of conspiracy, crimes against peace, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. Death by hanging. Wilhelm Keitel, guilty of conspiracy, crimes against peace, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. Death by hanging. Ernst Kaltenbrunner, guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity. Death by hanging. Alfred Rosenberg, guilty of conspiracy, crimes against peace, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. Death by hanging. Hans Frank, guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity. Death by hanging. Wilhelm Frick, guilty of crimes against peace, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. Death by hanging. Julius Streicher, guilty of crimes against humanity. Death by hanging. Walter Funk, guilty of crimes against peace, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. Life imprisonment. Hjalmar Schacht, not guilty on this indictment, released. Karl Dernitz, guilty of crimes against peace, and war crimes, 10 years imprisonment. Erich Rader, guilty of conspiracy, crimes against peace, and war crime, life imprisonment. Baldur von Schirach, guilty of crimes against humanity, 20 years imprisonment. Fritz Saukel, guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity, death by hanging. Alfred Jodl, guilty of conspiracy, crimes against peace, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. Death by hanging. Franz von Papen, not guilty on this indictment, released. Albert Speer, guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity. 20 years imprisonment. Konstantin von Neurath, guilty of conspiracy, crimes against peace, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. 15 years imprisonment. Arthur Seiss Inquart, guilty of crimes against peace, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. Death by hanging. Hans Fritsche, not guilty on this indictment, released. Martin Bormann, tried in absentia. Guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity. Death by hanging. The trial is over. Seven begin their prison sentences. Goering chooses to die by his own hand. The other ten wait for the gallows.
In Nuremberg, the people of the world found out what happened and why. But Nuremberg is more than an answer to a question. As Justice Jackson said, this trial is part of the great effort to make the peace more secure. It constitutes juridical action of a kind to ensure that those who start a war will pay for it personally. Nuremberg stands as a warning to all those who plan and wage aggressive war. <laughs>